Hey everyone, so Termo here again. So as you saw in one of our recent videos, we went against this TF bar deck and that beat us and I really had to try it out because it looked out really fun. So that's what you guys are getting today, Twisted Fate bar. And this deck is big brain. Like you have to really keep in mind when to use your draw engines, when to attack, etc. And I, I, as you see in the video, in the video today, there's, there's a ton of times that I made some dumb misplays just because I was not playing correctly. Uh, but how does this deck work? The, the whole idea is that obviously you have bar and you have Twisted Fate and you play a Bilgewater package that has a lot of draw so that you're able to draw into your shines more often. And obviously if your shines are able to hit your Twisted Fate or hit your Elusive, so Sap or, or Bobberfish, those are your two win conditions, right? A big Twisted Fate that's going to be a lot hard to remove except for like Vengeance or Minimorph. And then your big Elusives that are just going to be pushing a lot of damage every single turn. The rest of our deck is kind of support around that, right? So obviously from the from the bar package, we play triple bird, triple Esmos. Oh yeah, we can also hit the champs in the Esmos. I always forget that Esmos is also an elusive. So you can also have like a big Esmos on the field, right? So bird, Esmos, right? Mystic Vortex, triple bar, even even uh, double, double Maduli are all there to just increase your chances of having chimes and hit them into the deck. We even play Cosmic Binding, which technically it does add chimes to the deck. But really, Cosmic Binding is just more there to protect ourselves against like Thralls or any other uh, opponent's units that want to attack. So this is more like a support stun package control, more than shine control, more than more than shine support. Then from Bilgewater, we have stuff like Pool Shark, Croaker, right? Pick a car, Salvage, Twisted Fate himself, Sap herself, one Iron Nagaboros, right? All cards that can actually draw us other cards, enabling those shines to trigger more and more often. And making our units bigger and bigger and harder for the opponent to deal with and then we kind of finish it up with like some make it rains to be able to deal with some of the opponent's units as and also helps us advance our verbal fish a little bit more uh and then also we do obviously a verbal fish which is a big combo piece so pretty much it's like a kind of like an elusive twisted fake combo deck using chimes um obviously to be honest bar that's how bar you're gonna see bar most often it's all about the elusive combos with him and this is not different from that I said that this deck is really, really fun because you really have to like, okay, when do I summon this card? When can I use pick a card? When do I do this? And it can be a lot more big brain than I thought. Uh, so this is a exact deck list that I borrowed from our opponent from, I think, yesterday or two videos ago. Uh, we went up against this deck and it's like, it's, it's genius. It's absolutely genius. Like, I actually love it and I'm having so much fun with this deck. So hope you enjoy the games coming on soon because, I, trust me, I enjoy them a ton. And as always, if you like the content, please make sure to subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. I'll see you all at the end of the video for some mulligan tips. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Jace and Lee's. Hmm. Don't think I need Bar this early. I think I want to get Bird or Esmus. My Dooley is not that great this early either. Uh, we get Esmus. So Esmus is okay. Problem is that our, our, the things that we want to hit are not in our hand either, so it's a little bit unfortunate. But at least the Esmos can potentially start working on, you know, uh, buffing up our bar. I mean, like, uh, leveling up our bar. Not like it's going to matter a lot. Maybe we actually don't play Esmos. Maybe we actually wait. Maybe we actually wait for Esmos. Because I don't really want to buff e either of these two cards. So maybe we're supposed to wait until we have something better in our hand. Maybe I'm supposed to just do the Fortune Crocker. I mean, I, I'm also okay just drawing here too, to be honest. Yeah, so I want to see those elusives. It's a little bit unfortunate that we didn't hit them. Three, six, seven, eight. So, someone told me that I need to start using the counter. I always forget that there's a ca hand counter here. Uh, okay, so... Same thing again though, right? So we can do the Esmos, or we can do the Pool Shark. Then we can do the pool shark into croaker, and that's probably better than trying to do the Esmos, to be honest. Obviously, it does mean that we're vulnerable to like a mystic shot or a battle feast here now, which will also buff the sentinel. But I think that's okay. The Maduli could actually present a lot of value for us. Yeah, so we ha we kind of forced to play bar here then, right? But the bar can easily just die. Still think it's worth it to play bar though. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and just play the bar now. Um 
Bar is gonna die. I think I think this game is gonna go long. And um, we don't have twisted fate, but the opponent who least was playing as twisted fate. I think this game is gonna be a game where uh Maduli is gonna be what's gonna be important for us. So if we're gonna rely on Maduli, when do I wanna summon the Maduli? I wanna summon him later on into the game when I have more charms in my deck so that I can double them. So opponent went ahead and committed the first vengeance, which I think I'm okay with that. We also probably need to start drawing. The problem is that if we try if we try to do the pick a card, we're actually gonna overdraw. So it's never gonna be correct to do it. Yeah, so we're actually in a situation where we probably have too many, too much value. Are we supposed to uh, are we supposed to just Maduli by now and call it a day? Maybe we are. Hey, we are. If the opponent gives us this, I'm okay with this. I'm gonna let it go first, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the make it win after the fact. If the opponent's gonna give it to us like this, I'm okay with this. I'm also okay with passing back. I just wanna kill this sentinel right now. I'm also okay with passing back here because we can al we can always do the out of the Naga Nagakaboros to be honest. So we able like we can kill we can kill this Jace with the Cosmic Binding, or we can just use the Aya Nagakaboros as well, right? Like I think I have to try. Yeah, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm just gonna kill this Jace. I don't think I need to do it. This also adds three shines to our deck, by the way. So it improves our game plan that we're talking about with Maduli. Opponent can try to level up Jace right here, but they will have to spend a six cost power in something that is not doing anything for them. Right? Um I'm gonna do the croaker right now. I don't want the croaker to get hit. I want my elusives to get hit. So I think I'm going to let it go like this. When do I want to play my Dooley? When do I want to play my Dooley? I want this because I think this elusives are going to be how we win the game. I think I want to be sure that I have like at least other elusives in my hand. You know what? Let's just do it now. Let's do it. Let's do it now. That's going to pop up. We, we, we also could have done the Esmos and then the Maduli that we have also doubled the Shams in our in the especially the ones on top of our deck. But now we're drawing at least two shines every time we draw for the most part. And we still have a ton of draw to go through, right? I'm willing to attack with both again because opponent, if opponent tries to block, even blocking here means that they lose to the make it rain. Meaning that we don't have to worry about the Abosphorus attacking into us. We also have a burst speed blocker that the opponent doesn't know about. And we still have another cosmic binding to, to also prevent this to stun or damage the opponent. I think because the opponent knows that we're playing Cosmic Binding now, they're going to be a lot more careful. Okay, so they get to level up the Jace, unfortunately. Get to level up the Jace and smartly doesn't block with the Ferris. Um, so a little bit unfortunate there. I think we might have to just do the, one of the Esmoses right now. We might have to do one of the Esmoses right now. Just so that we have blockers and that we're mana efficient. And because we also kind of need to thin out our hand because we're, we're overdrawing too many cards, right? What we have to hope for now is that we somehow get Twisted Fate. And we're able to like turbo level Twisted Fate because the opponent really used Double Vengeance, right? So we know that the opponent really used Double Vengeance. Um, but I don't know how much that's actually going to matter to us. Shock Blast. Okay, so he's gonna, he's gonna start. He's gonna start with the Shock Blast, which is gonna obviously kill my thing here. We can start with the Cosmic Bindings, stunning this one and dealing two here. And we have to hope that we hit the Make It Rain. It's a seventy-five percent chance of us hitting it. I don't really want to commit the second Make It Rain to be honest, because I want to keep enough mana for the Iron Arcaboros. So if we don't hit it, we don't. Okay, we hit it. So we hit it. We hit the Make It Rain. Uh, we're able to stun his units. Opponent still gets to attack with the Jace, which does have Quick Attack, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, I, 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 I Naga Kaboros does mean that our losers are going to start becoming really, really big, which is good for us. Opponent always attacks here. If they don't attack, I'm also okay with that. I think we go ahead with the I Naga Kaboros and just block the damage. He also gets our, our Verbal Fish a little bit bigger. What we actually need to do is not summon the Burble Fish until next time, to be honest. Because we are going to be drawing more Shams as well, right? 
So this this means that there's a chance that the bubble fish gets buffed instead of buffing something else. So like we can do this, we can do bird, and then we can fortune croaker, and it's gonna hit the asmus or the bubble fish. Opponent really use double vengeance. I guess they could have another one here because of uh because of this guy, and they could also have another shock glass. And another shock blast is a problem. Another shock blast is a problem. Because he can just kill my elusives. Oh, wow. Wait, opponent. Seven? This is seven. This is seven plus four is 11. This is buffing this by one, which is 12. Opponent is literally going to be at four HP. They're literally going to be at 4 HP. Ha. Hmm. And we have plenty of blockers. And we have plenty of blockers. I think we actually did the pick a car. I want to summon the bird as well. My problem is my problem is things like... Uh, obviously, I'm concerned about battle piece, right? So if I summon the bird... He can do battle feast and actually kill our bird and then get a blocker for something else. So maybe we just do the pick a car right here instead. Do we have to do a second pick a car? What if we do? What if we just go all in? What if we just go all in? Because all we need to do is four damage, right? Opponent's, opponent's gonna try to do lethal this turn. That's a good draw. That's a very good draw as well. We have four six mana. This is cost zero, so that's another good draw. And this cost two, so we can also play it. And look at that. This this units are huge. This units are huge. So now opponent's gonna do what? Check. Oh, piercing darkness. So actually, he gets the double. He gets double heal here. He does get the double heal. He also means the Ferris is still doing plenty of damage. We can do the bird first. We can do the pool shark second. We can actually threaten the kill on the Jace. Because I don't want to take that damage from Jace. So I think I need to always block. Because opponent could easily have another shock blast and waiting to try to kill us. If the opponent wants to kill this unit, I'm also I'm, I'm completely okay with this. Yeah, like I'm completely fine with this. Because I think we have enough elusives that we can actually kill him. Like our sap is at 11 attack unit. So this is four sets. Seven. So we can pull shark. We always Esmos first. So we always have to Esmos first. Well, we, we Mystic Vortex and then Esmos. It increases our amount of shimes in our deck. Which means that it increases the odds of the sap actually hitting one of them. Right? So we Esmos. We sap. And anything that any shine that we draw from the sap is going to go to the Burble Fish. And now the Burble Fish is huge, and I'm actually willing to do the second pick a card. And now we pretty much have lethal here, right? Oh, wait, this is so good. More powder. Tricks, playful trickster. Wait, this is so good. Playful trickster. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Now, I need to attack, so I need to open attack. That's the only problem. So I need to open attack because I, I cannot die to a Shock Blast plus Mystic Shock combo. So I think it's always correct to open attack. We always have the Playful Trickster here to kind of back this up. Opponent would need to literally have Vengeance here. And if they do the Vengeance, they lose their double Shock Blast value from Jace, right? Yeah, so let's do it like this. So let's say the vengeance right here. They already use two vengeances, right? So I mostly can only have one more vengeance. If the vengeance right here, they go down to, I guess, still gonna have enough for six mana, so they could still have like something else. But the vengeance is gonna eat up the double attack from the Jace, right? So now opponent is down to six mana. And then here is when we do this. We do, wait. Okay, now this one, this was not created from him. What he created from this was the Trisha Barash, right? So there's nothing, there's nothing that I need to worry about here for six mana that he could have. So it's just gonna go like this. 
And heck, if we even if we do a make it rain or a twisted pay, we still have a chance as well. I'm putting in little using the apprentices too early, right? True so by the rush was what he got from the financier. Vengeance number one. Wait, he only used one vengeance actually. Am I am I wrong about that? Am I wrong about that? I thought he used two. Maybe maybe he only used one, and I didn't realize that. I thought he I thought he used two already. Okay, yeah, this is game anyways. Woo! Let's sh let's let's see the bar level up. He's at hundred and six out of twenty. Let's see the bar level up so that we get some mastery points on bar at least. And can I go from there? Wow. Wow. My dually came in clutch. My dually came in clutch because we ended up getting so much shines. And our losers ended up just being perfectly, perfectly big. So yeah. GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be up against Bar Galio. Hmm. My problem in this matchup is that the opponent's gonna have a lot of challenge. What? A, what is this hand? <laughs> what? What is this hand? Um, you know what? I'm gonna keep it for the memes. I'm gonna keep it for the memes. There's a potential that I twist the pig. It's really big, and that's all I care about, right? We have a 32% chance of the first shine hitting the twist of fate, and then next turn we obviously gonna have a lot more. A lot more of them down the field so i'm just gonna do it but what i was gonna say what i was saying is that the opponent's gonna have a lot of challenges that we have to worry about which can be really troublesome for us man out of every single out of every car he had to hit the second bird he couldn't hit any of the sap or the twisted fate that's actually really unfortunate i'm just gonna go ahead and attack Wait, <laughs> Just get my five damage in, because the opponent's never gonna block, right? The opponent can only kill this bird. The second one stays alive. <laughs> and now the shines. Okay, okay, okay. We get one on Twisted Fate, one on the Sap. Yeah, be my guess. I'm gonna pass. Oh, he gets the. Oh, that's such a good roll for for him. He gets the redeemer by sacrificing his thing. Is this a twisted fate level of type of type of game? If it is, that's, like I don't want to summon twisted fate first. I want to see what he does first. Yeah, that's what I, that was. That's what I was thinking. I was like, we're never gonna level up twisted fate against this deck, right? Because they're gonna have so many challengers. So I guess we lost. We lost that by summoning this afterwards. He has double. <laughs> He has double Broadwind. Come on, that's not fair. Okay, so we can do Pull Shark into Twisted Fate. And that should be okay for us. We play in build rules, son. I wonder if he actually attacks. He should attack, right? He should always attack because he should be scared of the sap. Oh. There's a chance that he doesn't attack. I gotta make it rain now. So I'm gonna make it rain right now. And the reason that I wanna make it rain right now is because I don't want the opponent to like pass back to us. Perfect. So now that they do it like this, I can actually do Twisted Fate, right? So I kinda baited the opponent into like attacking here so that we could actually bring the Twisted Fate out. Because if we didn't, the twist, if, if we summon Twisted Fate, we just lose to the Broadwind. And I didn't wanna pass because the opponent could just pass back. We get double salvage plus have a sap in our hand. It's gonna all depend on whatever card we draw here. Cosmic binding. Okay, I'm I think I'm gonna have to let go of this cosmic binding, right? I think we just sap and then try to level up twist the fate. Oh yeah, okay, so we're dead. Okay, so now we can actually kick that. We can actually kick this back. I don't think I can attack with the sap. So I don't think I can attack with the sap. Just because if we attack with the sap, we lose to the uh, sharp side. Like, I need to have the blockers. We can level up... That's a big galio. We can level up Twisted Fate right here, right? We can level up Twisted Fate. Problem is that we tap out of... 
tapped out of the stun, right? I would probably taking too much damage. So we're taking way too much damage. I guess honestly, maybe not that much. Maybe not as much as I thought. I need to try to see if we can somehow hit the I wanted to hit the Galio. I needed to hit the Galio. Now we need to do that now because I need to get the mana back for cosmic binding, and then we do the red car. And the red car will actually stop the problem from being able to kill us. But then we lose because it's 14 damage. Oh, so we have to do it like this. Oh, no, no, because we always stun something, right? So we can do it like this and Twisted Fate stays alive. But if the opponent has a sharp side, Twisted Fate will die. If the opponent has the sharp side, the Twisted Fate will die. I guess I got to do it like this. I have no choice. Ah, uh, it's all about the sharp side. It could also be the Galio spell, right? The Galio spell means that the Twisted Fate still dies here too. Galio spell means that Twisted Fate dies. Sharp side means that we die. Single combat means that we die. Ranger's Resolve means that we definitely die. Oh, no, wait. Oh, yeah, we die because this is going to survive, right? So we lose the Twisted Fate. Opponent gets to level up the Galio. Oh, man. Okay, we got, we, we almost got there. We almost got there. But it's just unfortunate because we leveled up Twisted Fate. And the opponent just had too many challengers. Which is what we talked about right away at the beginning of the game, right? That the challengers was just going to stop us completely. And now, even if we draw a second Twisted Fate, I don't think it's going to do us any good. Because the moment that we summon Twisted Fate, the red card is just actually helping out the Galio. So the red card is actually helping Galio out. We can't even really, we can't even like do anything here. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, man. Like if we had any other spell, maybe. So this this takes us to four mana. So we we, we don't have, we cannot play the verbal fish. Yeah, this is game. I guess we can do bar. We can do the bar and have double cosmic binding next turn. I guess there is a chance, right? There is a chance here. So we can bar. That taps us out of mana. So now we actually don't trigger the red card. Then next turn we can Cosmic Binding, Cosmic Binding. Opponent still gets the rally though. So opponent still gets the rally. So we can Cosmic Binding here. Still not enough. Well, yeah, no, it's still not enough. It's still not enough, right? Because we're gonna that we're gonna we're gonna still lose by one. Because what we can do is do this. Yeah, we we're off. We're off. We're literally off. Uh, maybe it's gonna have to be then. Okay, so we can stun the bar. We can stun the bar, but there's no way for us to stop the banger, right? Yeah, there's no way for us to stop the banger. Because we can do... Ha. Huh. So if we go... Because we always have to kill this guy. Well, we have to hope that this dies to like... Uh... No, there's no way to stop it, right? There's no way to stop it. Stun. Stun. It's not enough. Sorry, I did this the wrong way. Oh wait, there is a chance. There is a chance. <laughs> we live at one and the opponent gets rally and we just lose the game. But the rally's okay. Wait a second. And again, same thing again. Sharp side finishes the game for us. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we actually found the one way to live. We actually found the one way to live, but all the opponent needs is was one more unit, right? Yeah, yeah, stop GG me, man. I know that you have it. I know that you have it. I, I really know that. I know that you have another unit that you can use here. 
So if he has another of the vanguards, we're in trouble. I need to do this now then. So this stuns the unit. Our opponent doesn't have enough attackers. But then we lose the Twisted Fate regardless, right? So we always lose the Twisted Fate anyways. Opponent only has enough for one more unit. Oh, we lose to the Elusive. Wow. <laughs> we lost to the Elusive because the opponent still has the Challenger. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <laughs> oh man that, that was close i actually had a lot of fun even though we lost because he like we were trying to look for the trying to look for that one out right we we're trying to just survive as much as we could we finally got there we found a way to actually survive and he ends up not mattering because the opponent ends up having the esmos and we need obviously we knew right with the rally that he was always gonna survive here so yeah ggs so in this matchup We'll be going up against Thralls. Okay, so... Hmm. There's gonna be... Two... I mean, the Cosmic Bindings are really good, right? I guess Thralls. I just don't know if they're gonna be enough. Hmm. Okay, getting Bar is not bad. I'm trying to see how can we get bigger. Like, I want to... I needed to get Twisted Fate, right? Twisted Fate would have been a really good option here. Because we could potentially level up Twisted Fate. If we hit the shimes, if we hit the early shimes on Twisted Fate, that was that was gonna be our out. So the fact that we didn't get Twisted Fate is kind of unfortunate. Um, hmm. Okay, at least they hit the elusive. That's not bad. At least we hit the elusive, so that's not bad. We're also pushing two damage. I don't think I can ever summon the pool shark because there's too many cards. I guess we could have right. We got pull shark to pick a car. My fear was that there's too many cars that I really don't want to hit. Why right? with the pull shark this early? Hmm. This is the pull shark now because I, I don't want to hit the pull shark with any of my shines. So I'm okay doing the pull shark right now, so I can potentially avoid hitting any of them with the shines. Why do we always get? I feel like we always get like the worst cards. Feels, feels like we always get the worst cards. I'm gonna bar. Because bar is pushing a lot of damage, right? Like, opponent cannot block here, right? Yeah, whatever. You save some damage here. But you probably don't want to block with your Lissandra. So you don't want to block with your Lissandra, meaning that you're gonna take an additional 4 damage. We have double elusives on our, on our hand that are gonna continue to get buffed with the Shimes. Bar is at eight we only have 13 though not enough I can go like this start working on getting this guy lower uh that throws is gonna summon next turn because the opponent probably has time in a bottle we get the salvage right back we actually get the salvage right back cosmic binding is really good uh cosmic binding is really good yes yeah, so promising future is really bad however it does mean that the opponent doesn't really have a way to actually trigger this right now right for one mana for one mana they don't have a way to trigger this so i think we always pull shark first because if we get any shines from the sap i want them to hit the verbal fish we don't get them Ugh. we don't get them a little unfortunate but it could also easily have cosmic bindings again not what we want to see cosmic binding is once again not what we want to see at least not right now. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to do the Burble Fish right now. The opponent could easily have the Sense of Time, right? Which is what I'm guessing they're going to play for. But I don't really know how good the Sense of Time is for them. Like, it does stop a lot of damage, but I don't think it's enough to actually threaten us. Oh, never mind. It's not Sense of Time, it's just Talia. I think I still attack with Bar. It does make the Bar a worse blocker, right? It makes a Bar a worse blocker into the throws. It's putting down to 4 HP, though. All we need to do is survive. 
think I have enough blockers that I don't want to summon the pool shark. I think I, I have enough blockers when they want to summon the pool shark because we're also drawing from the pick a car. Bar level sub? No, yet. Wow. Wait, that's three because I forgot that throw was duplicated. So actually, attacking with bar was a mistake. He gave him the space for the third one. Ah, just a misplay. I gave him the space for the last throw. So bar level sub here. We have the cosmic binding to at least stop some of the throws. Uh, we have decent blockers, right? So I don't think we're dying. The Kalia is not leveled up. Problem is that we don't really have any elusives because these guys are gonna just die. Uh, do we can do can we survive without actually sacrificing our elusives? I think so, actually. Especially if the opponent goes like this. So, opponent's trying to be like, hey, sacrifice your elusives and you'll be fine. We lose to, uh, we lose to... So, I don't want to do this, right? I, like, I don't want to do this, sorry, because he taps me out of Cosmic Binding. What if we actually Cosmic Binding, though? Why did we go like this? We're sacrificing all our elusives. But the opponent's gonna have a hard time. I guess they can have a negation here. We have to draw we have to draw one of our elusives and hope that the chimes hit them. If I didn't attack with bar last turn, the opponent only has two throws and we're in a decent spot. But then decides to go for the in in tune, which I don't agree with. You keep this elusive alive. You could have used that in tune to actually prevent lethal. Your Lysander still dies here, so you don't get access to the shot to the thing anymore. So we threw and the opponent threw right back at us. So now we have a good chance to join our elusive. We have 24 cards. We have four more elusives in our deck. We lose the Maduli, which means that now every every draw is gonna give us. I guess opponent could easily have another in tune. I'm uh, sorry, that we have three sisters to the police. Or have sense of time, so obviously what I will need is because mm. we don't survive another turn. Okay, so that's the burble fish that we talked about. We get twisted fate. All of this goes to the burble fish. There's no way we ever level up twisted fate, right? There really isn't a way for us to level up twisted fate. So I don't think it's actually correct. I think we have to try to go like this. Reduce the cost of this verbal fish and potentially try to hit chimes on it. We don't hit chimes on it. However, we do get this guy. This girl, sorry. Which gives us enough mana to actually summon the verbal fish because we can do the jettison. So we can do the jettison plus the make it rain and that will actually make both verbal fish cost zero. So Jettison plus Make It Rain makes both Barufus cost. If the opponent has sense of time, we just lose. Yeah, giving him that third throw completely blew us out. So if we didn't attack with Bar, we don't give him the third throw. Is that correct? I guess let's just do it now, right? I guess we just do it now. We just go like this. We even hit the Nexus, so the opponent takes one extra damage for no reason. So opponent's trying to draw, I guess. Um, we can do the first Burble Fish. So I like doing this one first, because this one doesn't die to an Avalanche. So if the opponent has an Avalanche, we can always just summon the second Burble Fish. We also get a draw right here. Sense of Times is exactly six. But even Sansa Times is not enough anymore, right? Because Sansa Times means that this goes to two, this goes down to one. If the opponent has Avalanche, this still stays alive. If it's Sansa Times, yeah, he's... So he has to draw. He has to draw. Uh, I don't think we need to attack with everything. Because obviously we can just, you know, 
keep our units back just in case because there is a chance that we can survive if we draw another cosmic binding i think the opponent definitely had cosmic binding and ah sorry sense of time in their hand unfortunately it was not going to be enough because we ended up drawing the three elusive so yeah ggs so in this matchup we'll be going up against uh katarina misfortune so this is going to be an aggro deck we have make it rain, but I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if make it rain is gonna be enough. Cause we don't really have. Okay, like we don't really have a lot of early blockers. That's my problem. Like I might have to even. I might even have to summon the. Okay, perfect. I did not want to summon the pool shark, but the bird is a lot better than pool shark. Yeah, so we'll we'll go ahead and do the bird. It also means that we start buffing up our guys here. We also have the cosmic binding. I'm I'm always blocking this. I'm willing to block this and not take that to damage because this is always this is always going to be vulnerable to misfortune and also to the Katarina one damage spell. Um, next time we can cosmic binding and then we can start setting up the twist of fate, right? Yeah. So that, next time we can cosmic binding and then we can start working on twist of fate. When I end up going for the fortune croaker. Wow. Wait. Why play fortune croaker in this deck? Hmm. Something that I'm missing. Why fortune croaker? So maybe we don't Cosmic Binding anymore. Maybe we just... Uh, for oh, wow. Especially if he does this. I'm going to go for the TF level up. Yes, I'm going to go for the TF level up. I'm going to actually go ahead and do... Uh, pick a card into Twisted Fate next turn. This is vulnerable to a uh, Fervor though, right? So I need to be careful about that. But I'm assuming... Yeah, Fervor is kind of scary. So, am I supposed to go for it? I think I am. I think I always am. I, I should have probably kicked the Mystic Vortex out instead, by the way. I think the Mystic Vortex was a better kick than the Cosmic Binding. Because I might need that second Cosmic Binding. But, I mean, Cosmic Binding is so expensive that maybe we don't actually need it. I want to do Pool Shark and I want to hit the Pool Shark with the Croaker. I never want to hit the Twisted Fate. So this is going to get us to 4 next turn. This is 5, 6, 7, 8, and natural draw is 9 and 10. We have enough mana to do Pool Shark plus Cosmic Binding next turn if we need to, or we can do Pool Shark into Croaker into Croaker, depending on how the opponent plays it. Oh, that's a high roll. <laughs> well, at least we have Pool Shark to kill it, right? We have Pool Shark to kill it. Can also bar. We can kill that Katarina. We can kill that Katarina with the Cosmic Binding. When it's gonna decide to go like this. So they're gonna really that's 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 main deck for them. Wow. So Twisted Fate is gonna die to the block. To the Maruder, or is he gonna just do Blaze Edge into Navigator? He needs to he needs to scout attack every time, right? Yeah, he needs to scout attack every time. He decides to go like this. In which case, I'm gonna force him. I'm gonna force him to sacrifice his Croaker. Because we can trade like this. It sucks we're gonna lose the sap though. So we can trade like this. We lose the Twisted Fate no matter what, right? But this is forcing the opponent to have to trade with his Croaker and does the Blade Edge. So they need to attack with the Croaker and do the Blaze Edge to actually be able to kill this Twisted Fate. They lose the Katarina. Um, I guess they do get a free draw here. Yeah, so they do have to commit that. Yeah, go ahead. That's fine. They get the free draw, so it's, it is a good value. We have a second Cosmic Binding for a potential um, second Katarina. Unfortunately, not really a lot of value here in our hand. We obviously have to do this bar. <laughs> we have to do the bar, right? We have to do the bar. Question is, do we do the bird or do we do the croaker? Or are we even willing to attack with the bar? I think I'm actually willing to attack with the bar. I think the bar means that we potentially start getting a lot of shimes in our deck. 
Uh, he also does give us a good value, some good value here. Maybe not. Oh, what a high roller. But I guess he has to replay that every time, right? Do we bird or do we mystic? You know, I think I got a mystic. I think I want I want the draw to trigger sooner rather than later. We can always because we're always gonna get hit. Like we're never gonna block with and we're never gonna block with the mystic uh with the bird next turn anyways, right? Until afterwards. Unfortunately, I wish you actually would have spread out a little bit better here. Bonnie decides not to do any not to grab us. I'm willing to block. Let's say that the opponent has misfortune. Okay, and if he does it like this, it's even better for us now, right? I think that's even better for us. I guess the only problem here is that we don't have enough to actually summon the second bar. I guess we can summon the second bar right now, but... Um, I think I want to keep the Cosmic Binding instead. I think the Cosmic Binding is a little bit better here. I guess we have to do the bar now. We have to do the bar now, unfortunately. Okay. I guess let's just do this then. That's a lot of that's a lot of units. It's a lot of units. And Bard is still vulnerable again. He decides to sacrifice his more. Okay, I was gonna say you have plenty of good attackers here. The good thing is that we can trade pretty good with the Fortune Croaker. And he doesn't even give us the navigators. That means that he must have the value that he thinks is important with the scouts. For him to consider that not worth not, not being a worthy trade. Hmm. It's pretty good. So I think we always do the sap. So we always do the sap first. Because he could potentially level up bar right here. Of course we don't get it. <laughs> We actually don't get it. I don't care about a uh, bar being stunned. Then I think we do... I guess we're going to do the croaker then, right? I kind of like... I kind of like keeping this guy healthy instead of the sap. I don't think the sap matters. Still don't get the level up? Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. That's that's a little bit low rolling, to be honest. Now we get the level up. Thank you. And of course, now we get the three. So I wanted to get the level up first, because obviously it means that every every unit after that is going to be buffed up. So it was a little bit unfortunate that it took that long for us to actually get that level up to trigger. Um, kind of sucks, but it's okay. We can make it rain right now if we wanted to. I don't think we actually need to, and I think I'm I'm fine not attacking with the sap because we can just block them more next turn. Yeah, now we're talking. Now everything starts getting buffed. We can do the maduli. We have blockers for the navigators. The bar stays alive. We can block this one for free right here. We can make it rain and hit as many units as possible. And we have the perfect make it rain in all three units. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's actually going to try to kill the bar. Do we even care about the bar at this point? You know, I kind of do. I kind of like keeping the bar alive. I kind of like keeping the bar alive. Because everything is going to be buffed, right? Yeah, we, we just summoned this guy. He's giving us an additional draw. Um, Wow. That was the best make it rain I have ever seen. <laughs> I think opponent was a little bit unfortunate though, right? They didn't jump his fortune. Uh, but we, I think we had enough value with the Cosmic Binding and all the stuff like that that he ended up not mattering anyway. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll go against Deep. Okay, so they do have a lot of ways to remove our stuff. However, they don't really have a great way to deal with Elusives, right? I think I'm fine passing everything here. I think I want to see if I can get stuff like this. Esmos and Bird are pretty good. Wanted to see if I could get Twisted Fate. Unfortunately, didn't get it. But I at least we started leveling up Bar really quickly here because of Esmus and Bear already making us trigger one Shime each. Ideally, this Shime will go on Bar on Esmus and not on Croaker. It's a 33% chance. I guess 25% chance. 25% chance he went to that one, and he, of course, goes to that one. <laughs> um, hmm. 
Having a second bar though is pretty pretty good, right? Because second bar is also draw. Like the second bar counts as a draw and also gets us a lot of shimes. I think ideally we want to level up bar this game. I think if we can level up bar, we can potentially have a good chance of winning. The opponent has the three mana spell that can actually reduce the the value here. I think we always croaker. I think we always croaker. Especially because he's so big, right? I feel like the opponent's not gonna have really a good blocker here. Especially if they go like this. If they go like this, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack like this and make this to be not blockable by the sea scarab. If he blocks the sea scarab, I'm okay with that. That's one less sea scarab we have to worry about. Opponent looks to have an aqua hand, because I don't think if they had like an actual hand, I don't think there's ever any reason to actually block with your sea scarab. And opponent still took four damage. And remember, although we're technically not fully an elusive deck, we do still have a lot of elusive value, right? So we still have a lot of elusive cards that the opponent needs to worry about. I think I like the Mystic Vortex and then the Esmus. And then we summon Bar. And there's a good chance that Bar, I guess it's not, I mean, it's a good chance that we can level up Bar because of the Bar spell. But we're still in a bad spot. When it has 30 cards, why give me the second scare? I still think, I still don't know if that's worth it. You trade your second scare up. I guess the opponent doesn't care about going deep anymore, but like those units are also going to become big. There's a two bone skewers already. We can do the Asmus here. That gets this to 14. If we somehow can get three more chimes, we can actually get to the level of bar. We get Twist of Fate. I guess Twist of Fate ended up not working out right now. So I think we just put Bar down. I think we just put Bar down. We can just summon Twist of Fate next turn once his stats are actually bigger. Because there's a good chance. Oh, you know what? We should, have, we should have summon Twist of Fate right now. The problem is that if we summon Twist of Fate right now, we, we die to an Undergrowth. And I really, didn't, I really didn't like that idea of just dying to an Undergrowth. Bar levels up right here too because of the Esmos. I forgot about that, right? So the bar was a 16, right? The two Esmos, each of them are adding an additional two. So that was enough to take us to 20. We get an extra draw from the Mystic Vortex. Um, which means that everything that's gonna be in the field is gonna get buffed up, and our twisted fate is also gonna get buffed up. So this is when our loses become really crazy really quickly. Yeah, so Twisted Fate gets to be buffed up once here, as well as something in the field. Somehow we drew nothing. Somehow we drew nothing. Uh, opponent wants us to play something here. Like, opponent wants us to commit something. We could do the Make It Rain. Or we could do the Barge Traveler Call. I don't think we do either. I think we just let it go. I think we just go like this. I think we just start working on the on the uh, on the twisted fate and call it a day. Because we can potentially level up twisted fate with this hand. We can 100% level up twisted fate. You know the bad thing about putting the bird down is that any shines is not gonna hit anything. So I think I'm actually not gonna do it. I think I'm going to just keep my mana because, again, we can potentially just level up Twisted Fate next turn. So, opponent's probably going to have Nautilus here. Yeah, see, the Twisted Fate just gets so ridiculously big. And so does the Elusive. The Twisted Fate is at 4. This is giving us 1, that's 5. This is giving us 2, that's 7. This is giving us another 1. So this is already 11 mana. This is one draw. We can just do the croaker. We can do the croaker. I like the croaker because it gives us a draw and also starts pushing a lot of damage. Opponent gets to summon Nautilus and they 100% are going to have the value here. I like the second bar. Perfect. The sap is really good too. Our units are just going to get so ridiculously big. We can do the sap. 
which will give us more draw here. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, we, we, ha we had the elusives too, right? So we had two elusives in the field. All our units in the board are like getting ridiculously crazy. Like this deck is a nice, nice combo deck. So yeah, GG's. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed those games. I wasn't kidding when I said this is a really, really fun deck. Uh, like actually have a lot of fun just playing this for fun and not just even recording. I actually might try this out on my main account, on my America's account, and see if I can actually climb with this deck. So I think there is some potential here. Uh, it's, it's just very tough. It's just very tough. And sometimes obviously you get screwed over by the RNG, not hitting your, not hitting your shimes, but it is what it is. Uh, in terms of mulligan, definitely always you want to keep the bird. I like keeping Twisted Fate early because if, if we keep Twisted Fate early, it means that we can start buffing him with the champs. So I like the bird, I like Twisted Fate, and I like Esmos. So Esmos, bird, Twisted Fate will be the only cards that I will keep. Everything else I think you can kick away. And uh, maybe Mystic Portis you can keep as well is if you're not going against like an aggressive deck, but I'd rather just kick it, kick it away as well. Uh, so bird, Esmos, Twisted Fate, and then kind of go from there. As always, if you like this video and you like the games and the content, please make sure to like the video below and also subscribe to us. We post videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Determined, where we recently became a Twitch partner. So, woo! Uh, we, we try to stream every now and then. Uh, I will be streaming more once we get to like mid-June. I'm just really busy with like a project at work, so I haven't been able to stream as much. And you can also find us on Twitter and Discord. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.